I never do introduce the song by its name. I'll just say, see if you like this one. <laughs> Let them figure it out. <laughs> I'm Del McCurry, and this is my bluegrass story. My dad, he had this radio, but he'd take the car battery out and put it in the radio on Saturday evening to listen to the Grand Ole Opry. We'd take it back and put it in the car on Sunday morning and roll it off down the hill and start it and go to church. That's how we listened to the Grand Ole Opry on a, on a six-volt radio. Now, my dad, he didn't play anything. He didn't... He just, he just liked music. But my mother, now she could play a piano and the guitar. She could play harmonica. And she taught my brother, she taught him to play all those instruments. She gave it to him and he gave music to me, you know. When he was home, he'd rather not be playing by himself. And he thought, well, if I teach uh, Brother Delano, say he called me Delano at home, that was my real name. If I teach him some chords, he can play with me, you know, and I'll sing, and we'll both play guitars and all that, you know. He started buying records, but he bought this record of Roll In My Sweet Baby's Arms. That was on the one side. The flip side was I'll Just Pretend. Earl Scruggs played back up behind Lester Flatt, and I played that over and over and over, and I thought, well, I'm not going to play the guitar no more. I want to try to play one of those things. <laughs> I wore that hole real big, you know. Them holes are just about that big, but I wore real big. He'd go, wom, 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 as it went around. <laughs> well, I met Jack Cook, and he was an ex-bluegrass boy. He had played with Bill Monroe about three or four years in the late 50s. I went in to see him one time, and I told him I played banjo. And he said, you got it with you? And I said, yeah. So I took it in, tuned it up, and played with him, you know, and sang with him. And he liked, really liked what I'd done. And that's how I got started playing with him. You know, I was just so interested in learning to play music. You know, I just, and, and I really didn't care if I got paid. It was just fun, you know. I never really thought about that I would ever be real big, you know. I just didn't. I just thought, well, I love to play and I love to learn. And, and that's all it takes, I guess, to advance yourself, you know. Heard that city of New Orleans Go rumbling past this old shack of mine Yeah, the windows carry on And the timbers creak and groan That old girl is well on down the line Some people say don't get cold in Memphis But I've seen that old river freeze up tight Yeah, she used to melt me down Till she caught that southern bound Crossed that bridge and left me cold as ice So stop that came along Cover every mile of track And I'd bring my baby back Put a happy ending to this song
stay. a ticket check out every whistle stop that came along cover every mile of track and i'd bring my baby back put a happy ending to this song Horses, bourbon, and the great outdoors. That's Kentucky. Original, majestic, and wide open. In one day, visit legendary distilleries, explore horse country, or put on your hiking shoes and get out there. This is Kentucky. Come see for yourself. Plan your road trip at KentuckyTourism.com. Hey, everybody. I'm Dan Tominski. My favorite magazine is Bluegrass Unlimited. It can be yours, too. Get your subscription to Bluegrass Unlimited, the monthly print publication of bluegrass music since 1966. Bluegrass Unlimited includes feature articles on bluegrass history and tradition, current artists and bands, and so much more. Subscribe today online at bluegrassunlimited.com. And if you subscribe today using code MYBLUEGRASSSTORY, you'll save 15% of the regular subscription rate. The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatt and Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, We Banjo 3 on March 18th, Rhonda Vincent on March 25th, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show, My Bluegrass Story. Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. I was playing with Jack Cook in Baltimore. And I saw this guy come in and he had a big white hat on. It's kind of dark in there, you know. And I thought, that guy looks like Bill Monroe, but he wouldn't be in this place. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and after that set was over, Jack, he just kind of walked over and said, Bill, come on in. And he took him in the kitchen where we tuned up in that little old bar there. I heard him talking, you know, and he's talking about going to New York, and I, then I figured it out. And Jack said, uh, uh, Chief, have you got a banjo player with you? And he said, no, I don't. He said, let's just take Dell. He'd play all that stuff. <laughs> so I did. I went with him. Kenny Baker was sitting here, and Bill over here, and I'm sitting in the middle on that hump between them. And that's usually where they put the new guy. <laughs> so Bill, he he speaks over top of me and says, uh, Kenny, what do you think of this banjo picker? Kenny said, I'll tell you, Chief, he's got a wicked right hand. That's all I always said. He paid me and he said, now I'll tell you what, you got a job if you want it, you know. I said, I, I like playing with Jack, you know, and he said, when I look, he took out a little piece of paper and he wrote his phone number down. He said, if you take a notion, you call me right here, and uh, you come down there in Nashville. He said, you get a room at the Clarkston Hotel up on 7th Avenue, and call me, and I'll come in and get you. You know, there's guys that kill to get that, get that job to play with Bill Monroe, you know. Well, I called Bill up, and I asked him where he's playing. I said, I, I'm thinking about taking that job. And I, that's how I got the job then with him. 
on some of my tours, or Bill Monroe's tours, we we played in California. The Golden State Boys had a TV show, and I got acquainted with them, and they found out I was a banjo picker before I went with Bill, you know. So I played with those guys, and they, they offered me a job. And so I told Billy about that, you know, later, uh, later on. And Billy said, hey, let's go to California. That's where we need to be, man. California, yeah, let's go out there. No, I said, I want to stay with Bill, you know. <laughs> I told him, I said, Billy, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call their manager out, and I'll tell him that the only way I'll come out there is if I can bring a fiddle player with me, you know. So I called him up, and they said, uh, give us an hour. We'll call you back in an hour. They called back in there and said, yeah, bring him and come on. <laughs> well, then I had to quit Bill Monroe. Then I told Billy, I said, before I go out there, I'm going to get married because I'm afraid I'm going to lose her. I went home, got married to uh, Jean within a week. I was married in, and in California, you know. My wife, she got homesick within a week or two. And she'd call her dad at home. And they'd both be crying on the phone. Oh my goodness, and you know how that makes you feel. <laughs> so <laughs> I just couldn't take that, you know. And I thought, I've got to take her back home. So we only stayed out there maybe six months. In the end, we came back home and, uh, and then we just raised the family there, you know, never. Never did move no more. You know, I thought about, I should be in Nashville, you know, where there's a lot of music. I thought about that a lot. But you know, I was happy though, too, at the same time. I had a dream of you the other night, dear. A dream I could not live into life, I feel. You talk. With a friend of mine so lovingly Oh God, oh God, a crazy dream, please let it be Dreams, dreams of you, dear Tears, tears are so sincere Love Play. He danced and held you all oh, so tight The same way we did when our love was young and bright Then he kissed you under lights that were so dim I couldn't stand to see you there alone with him Dreams, dreams of you Sincere love, love that I can't hide. These dreams are breaking down all my pride. I realize a dream is only fantasy, but tell me why these dreams seem so real to me. Every night I have. I guess it's just because of all my jealousy Dreams, dreams of you, dear Tears, tears are so sincere Love, love that I can't hide These dreams are breaking Somehow that song hit me and I wrote it in the car. I had a 56 Oldsmobile and I wrote that song in, in a car. <laughs> Either going to work or coming back. It's usually coming back because I didn't have to be in a hurry coming back home. It's about what if that would happen, you know. It's one of those things. It's not a true to life song, it's not. In the heart of bluegrass country, on the banks of the Ohio River, there's a place where healthcare is different where it's woven into the very fabric of our local communities. Where doctors practice more than medicine, they practice living. Here, everyone cares for the patient and treats them like a neighbor, because they are one. This place is called Owensboro Health, where a healthier community is what we do. 
There's a city where a river of music flows, where you're invited to discover its deep roots in bluegrass music, and heritage and harmonies converge. It's a community that's just like the music it's home to, welcoming and authentic. This is Owensboro, Kentucky. This is the bluegrass music capital of the world. On June 22nd to 25th, 2022, Romp Festival takes place in Owensboro, Kentucky. Produced by the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Romp features four days of music, camping, jamming, and much more. Immerse yourself in bluegrass music by experiencing live performances from over 25 artists. Plan your trip to Romp Festival in Owensboro, Kentucky on June 22nd to 25th, 2022. More information about Romp can be found at rompfest.com. My banjo picker was a, a, a instrument repair guy. I said, take that home and, and, and when you get a little spare time, fix that mandolin. I said, I ain't no hurry for it, you know, well, nobody uses it. We were going to play Lincoln Center and uh, Monroe, he, he took a liking to Ronnie and, and he put his big cowboy hat on him. He put his mandolin in his lap and I said, now here, you play this, you know, stuff like that. Well. Ronnie said, Dad, where's that man on that that you had in that bus? And I said, well, I gave it to Dick. He's going to fix it to where it'll sound pretty good, you know? And I said, I told him he didn't need to be in no hurry. Well, hey, every time I, he'd see Dick, he'd get on him about that man and he wanted that man fixed. <laughs> he played that, and and I, I took him out on the road with me that summer. I said, now, you, you just stand up there with us and go, he's picking that stuff up just like that, you know? And of course, I showed him some of my songs, you know? And, and for a note here, this guy's better mandolin player than I could hire. Didn't even have to pay this one. <laughs> no, I did start paying him. <laughs> I never told him to practice, but if I'd hear him there in the evenings, you know, trying to play something and they'd just miss a note here, you know, I just, I, maybe I wouldn't even take the instrument. I'd just put my finger on a fret and I'd play that note right there. And, and I just kind of guide him, you know. I'm sure the boys probably never would have uh, came in the band, you know, in a band with me if I'd been on the road, say, with Bill Monroe, you know, because I'd been gone all the time. Most of the dates that we played, I'd be back home, you know, like when they were there in the evenings, you know, so I was around them every week. I wouldn't trade that for being on the road all the time and gone.
state of mind is desperate And the hole that I'm sinking in gets deeper While I'm digging to get out Old Pete, think of the right answer to the question I'm asking Tell me you still love me, that would turn my world about The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatten Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, Wee Banjo 3 on March 18th, Rhonda Vincent on March 25th, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show, My Bluegrass Story. Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. American Patriot Getaways has cabin rentals in Gatlinburg for any group size or budget. From a romantic studio for two to a 13-bedroom chalet, we can help you make memories any time of year. Break away from the everyday and take in the fresh mountain air from our cabin rentals in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. Enjoy luxurious amenities like a steamy hot tub, exciting game room, breathtaking views, or even a private indoor pool. Find your favorite cabin rentals in Gatlinburg today. This is what they gave me when I joined the Grand Ole Opry. We played the IBMA. I'd received some kind of an award, you know. I was talking at the microphone, you know. These two guys walked up beside me and I glanced over and it was Sonny Osborne and Ricky Skaggs. Sonny spoke up and he said, uh, where was you at 40 years ago tonight? <laughs> and I said, man, I don't know. <laughs> I had no idea, you know. <laughs> he said, well, I'll tell you where you were. You were singing lead and playing guitar with Bill Monroe on the Grand Ole Opry. And I said, oh, I guess maybe I was. <laughs> and he said, well, how would you like to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry? You know, the two of them asked me that, and that's how I found out about it. That was almost as big a shock as being with Bill on, on the Opry, you know, as a sideman. It means a lot to me, and I hope it does to anybody else that have aspirations of advancing in music, you know. from the city bought 40 acres up the road he made his money in the market now he's wearing cowboy clothes he ain't got no cows or chickens but the hat and boots look cool when he parties on the weekend it's what keeps me going, I think, to all these uh, shows and, and doing all these things, you know. I never get tired of music. I just don't. It just never left me. That, that desire never did leave, you know. I don't know if it ever will. If it does, I don't know what I'll do. I'm going to have to go and start playing baseball or something. <laughs> Sign up with the California Dodgers or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> but now he's trying to wreck my life He drives down in his new Hummer I tell my 
kids don't walk to school Took out my mailbox, squashed a possum